So my name is Cody Pondsmith. Um, I am the general manager at Artel Soaring Games, and we are here uh, for sort of the first time at PAX Unplugged just to kind of get a feel for the convention, see if we want to come by more often. We are primarily a tabletop RPG company, so uh, this, uh, this year we're just coming by with some of our, our recent products. Um, our big one at the moment is the Cyberpunk Red uh, Jumpstart Kit which is sort of the entryway into our new edition for Cyberpunk 2020, which is one of our oldest running games. Many people have probably heard of it through uh, 2077. So that's kind of our primary that we've, we've come to uh, show off, as it were. But we also have uh, the officially licensed new CDPR Witcher TRPG, which I was the primary designer on. And a bunch of our uh, a bunch of our other lines um, that we don't have a lot of new new stuff for at the moment, but we're bringing out so that everybody can see it. They're still great games. Going back all the way to the very beginning, shall we say, we were approached to do a Witcher TRPG by CDPR because we're of course you know working with them on 2077, and uh, we decided to go ahead with that. Um, and I set up a whole pitch for the uh, for the situation this big like green binder that was basically the entire core system for the game. I went over and pitched that and uh, I had this long, heavily stressful pitch meeting that uh, eventually got to the end of it, you know, we, we had a deal. And that was the beginning. Everything after that was uh, five to six years of, of game design and iteration, going in every day and, you know, taking copious notes on the Witcher novels and the video games and any bit of lore that we could scrape up from anything that was considered within our canon. And then sort of condensing all those notes into a cohesive game as best as possible, you know, writing rules, testing those rules, going back saying, you know, do they fit with the world of the Witcher? Does this feel like the world of the Witcher? And if it's yes, we move forward. If it isn't, we go back and we rewrite. Um, and you know that was most of it. It was just day after day of you know trying to translate this, uh, trying to translate mediums, and then going back and rewriting where necessary. I think there is, uh, you know, a, a lot of people have noted, and we always note uh, between us and CDPR that there's a big sort of thematic connection between Witcher and Cyberpunk. Um, both of them are very personal stories that do not shy away from making hard decisions and showing that actions have consequences. And I think that makes them, while they're not everybody's cup of tea, it makes them in some ways more relatable to a lot of people because it is usually a more grounded story. It's, it's you know, it's not necessarily going out and saving the world or, you know, going out and doing grand world sweeping things. It's, you know, fighting to survive and fighting to make your life better and help you, the people around you, your family and your friends and things like that. So I think, you know, the, the heavily personal nature of both Witcher and Cyberpunk, I think make them not just interesting for people, but they resonate well with people.